with filming with a toddler is they want to touch everything and they want to grab everything and they're hilarious and darling another scripture that i was really drawn to this week and it's in second timothy 1 7 and it says for god hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of a sound mind and i believe that we can choose to feel fear and it's taken me a long time to grasp that i really have so much I have so much control over what I want to feel. And okay, real talk here because I I also believe that you know, when people say like how are you feeling? That's a really loaded question for me. And I'm not a normal person because I know many people are like that's the easiest question in the world. But for me, that's like a loaded question because I don't think that you can just feel one thing sometimes. And I think we trick ourselves and we condition our minds into thinking I can only be happy or I can only be grateful, or I can only be courageous. But there is so much more to our emotional capacity than that. I believe that I can feel fear, but I can also feel peace at the same time. And maybe I'm crazy, this is just my personal feeling, this is not doctrine, please do not mistake the two. <laughs> but I know that I, in my times in my life, I felt fearful, but I've also felt peace that things are gonna be okay. You can feel both. You don't have to feel guilty for feeling one or the other or lots of different emotions. Or maybe you just don't know what you're feeling. And that's okay too. I don't think the Lord would ever reprimand you for not understanding what you're feeling. And sometimes the process of understanding what you're feeling will help you learn and discover things about yourself. So anyways, I love that scripture because everything given from Heavenly Father is good. We know that. And he gives us the spirit of a sound mind and power. But sometimes we still will feel the fear. He doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't mean he's going to take away the fear. It doesn't say God is going to take away the fear and replace it with peace of mind and power. It says he has not given us the spirit of fear. It never said that we won't still feel it. And so, I don't know, that just brought me a lot of comfort because... Wow. The other day I was feeling so extremely blessed and thankful. But then I was also just having a really bad day, just in general. And I was feeling so guilty because I was thinking in my head, I'm so blessed, I should be grateful. But then when I realized I could feel both, I didn't just have to put myself in one feeling box, but I could feel both. I could feel all of it. I could feel the full spectrum. Oh my gosh, you guys, that was a game changer for me. And I hope that as... Children of a loving Heavenly Father, we embrace every feeling, every emotion we have. Oh, beautiful maraca sounds. Beautiful. I saw this really inspirational quote on my Pinterest board, and it was saying, the seasons don't hold back. They feel everything. There's the snow, there's the sun, there's the rain, there's the clouds. And that's what makes the world beautiful. And I believe that's what makes us beautiful as spirit sons and daughters of God is feeling our full spectrum of feelings, feeling the capacity and the measure of our creation is accepting that we can feel many things at one time and it's okay. It's all okay. It's all welcome. It's all accepted. Here. So I was listening to the youth devotional with Gary Stevenson this week and, um, he said so many great things, so many great quotes. I just want to share my favorite quote because that is the quote of the day for sure. Also, Dawson is rocking the tripod, so don't be surprised if we go in timber soon. This is just real life, right? When you're parenting and you feel inspired to start a YouTube channel, it's going to have some bumps in the road. <laughs> okay, so. 
So, some of my favorite quotes. President Russell and Ballard, and he said, those who accomplish the most in this world are those with a vision for their life. And then they quoted the great proverb, when there is no vision, the people would perish. And I remember hearing that um, when I was out proselyting one day, and um, it's kind of intense, right? The word perish, but it's true. Having a vision, having a plan, being able to align our life with Heavenly Father's will for us, that's when we can succeed and that's when we can thrive. Um, for me personally, having a vision can be a blessing and a curse. It took me a lot of years to discover that this could be one of my gifts. But I think one of my potential gifts is I have the gift to envision, um, whether that's having an eternal perspective, whether that's envisioning what Christ and the Lord want me to find. But it can be a blessing and a curse because I can see things. I can really see things so clearly and I can imagine what they could be like. And then sometimes if those things don't happen, then I crumble. I get really crushed and devastated. And one thing that um, Elder Stevenson said was that we need to allow our visions to adjust. We need to be flexible. We need to accept that the whole vision itself can be transformed and reinvented. And I needed that, my friends, because we all have things that we envision for our life, goals, wants, dreams, desires. But part of wanting those things is accepting that it may change depending on the time, the season, of course, the Lord's will, number one. But that really changed my whole perception of what a vision can be. I always thought it was just clear, it was direct, and it was a certain way, and you were fixated on that one way. But to have a real vision, and especially the vision that the Lord wants you to have, is to allow it to change, allow yourself to grow and develop. And what's so great is any time that there's growth that takes place in our life, we are different. We become different. And I was listening to a primary song, and there was a line that I just love. Oh. says the truth only God can give us and I think that applies with our visions too you know we can create and daydream and think about all these things that we want to come to pass but God gives us those things ultimately and so we must align our visions with his vision for us and I testify and I know that it will always be greater for our good always his way will always be better than what we wanted I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I really, this has been kind of like a missing piece of the puzzle for me. And I don't know, like, maybe it's just me sitting down and talking out loud, but I feel that throughout the week I, I pay attention to things more. I'm looking for inspiration. I'm drawn to things. I also believe that all of you that send me emails and comments, like, you guys make me better too. So drop a comment down below when I need two things. First, I want to know who your favorite Star Wars character is. And I want you to guess mine. <laughs> you probably won't guess it. And then secondly, I want to know, I want to know a scripture that's given you, that's helped you be a force to be reckoned with. Like, that's just giving you that power, that pep in your step, that ability to go forth. I want to know about that scripture. And I want to read it and study it and internalize it because there's so much strength in sharing our testimonies, sharing what scriptures help us and build us and make us better and all the things. So... Brennan is taking me to LA, Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm so excited. That's where I serve my mission. That's where I say that's where I serve my mission, like so casually, but it's like I just get emotional thinking about the sacred experiences that took place while doing that. And gosh, I don't know. I just love, love who my mission made me and all the things. So. May the 4th be with you. Happy Star Wars Day. Happy, wonderful, beautiful week. What a fun week. We've got Star Wars Day, Cinco de Mayo. We've got Mother's Day. It's just, it's just a good week all around. And I hope you guys are feeling that. I hope you guys are feeling the goodness, the beautiful change and potential and possibilities that May brings. And I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully something in this video inspired you or uplifted you or helped you learn something new today. So, goodbye. Thanks so much, you guys, for watching, and here are some highlights of this month. I judged some dance competitions. Me and my best friend did a Bridgerton-themed tea party. 
we had our dance recital so i hope you guys enjoy so my best friend bobby and i are gonna go do a bridgerton themed picnic and we've got like the ringlets in the hair the ruffles the poofy dress i kind of wish like we dress like this every day is it just me my cute bestie and i on mother's day Tree of Life Vision was also featured on ABC4, so that was an exciting job update. Hey. High five to mom. Good job. <laughs> The Tree of Life project will feature over 200 larger-than-life figures representing the plan of salvation and be adjacent to the Light of the World Garden at Thanksgiving Point in Lehigh, Utah. Yes. Angela gave me a tour of the miniature version in her studio. The mark that I want to leave on earth is a truth of a God, a loving Father in heaven, and that each of his children is extremely special to him. <laughs> Brandon's thinking you better leave. Brandon's thinking you better leave because I have to go really close to the steering wheel. <laughs> the mark. <laughs> and here's a little bump update.